Oh, first and foremost, I think we should uh, show our appreciation uh, by the usual clapping a hand for our guest speaker, as Professor Dr. Shubhat Chandrade, who is our visiting uh, our university for the future. Shall we give a clap? Please? I think I won't wait for more time because time is catching up. It's already, I think we just proceed. Whoever comes a bit later, they can join. It's a very interesting topic on the collateral and breast cancer, something to look close to, not necessarily female, also to males. Okay? And uh, it's not all the time that we get uh, special people to come in. I consider it special. People we have lots of experience in this field. If you look at the, uh, the, 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 the slide, you can see all the the areas that have been, and he's, he's a very known surgeon at the same time. I think um, it's nice that he's willing to share with us some of it. And being young, um, half professionals, but most of them prof are quite young. I would consider young professionals. Come uh, uh, These are our medical students, but some of them are not out, some of them uh, are in because of the after exam. So this is something that uh, close to everyone. So I hope this session uh, will will uh, will give you some input and I hope there will be que uh, questions and all that. And then uh, with us also, I mean, uh, Dr. Yusuf, uh, our uh, DVC for internalization and uh, student affairs. So students need to know, especially although you are adult students, so if you've got problems or something, please refer to Dr. Yusuf. Because they are, most of them are new, they might not know. So, so I think without further ado, I call upon our guest speaker, Professor Dr. Shubhas Chandraji, to deliver the session for today. Right. Good morning everybody, ladies and gentlemen. I am not used to such growing uh, remarks about myself, which Dr. Javier also take out. I am not that famous in India. <laughs> <laughs> as we know, but as we I know have well. come here rather on a pleasure visit and to guide something about Mm, the teaching undergraduate student which I can communicate with them. And I was rather forced to <coughs> give this uh, lecture, you know, this, this basically I am what I am feeling is from my personal experience for the last 45 years. I have not brought any slide from India, but I am helped by Paul Bosch who has prepared some slides. I am not that much conversant with Malaysian uh, statistics, but what I am astounded to see that it is almost akin to Indian statistics. What I am saying is about colorectal and breast cancer, which are the probably the commonest cancers in the human body in Malaysia as well as in India. Colorectal cancer now hits the least in USA and also in Malaysia, particularly in some ethnic people. You know, colorectal cancer should be categorized as a cancer of the large guard. Large guard starts from cecum end in anus. The female population has got a preponderance of having a adenoma as well as the adenocarcinoma on the right side of colon. Whereas in the male part, it is on the left side. Why it happens, we don't know, but the statistics shows that. It's 
is of the age at basically colorectal cancer. Above the age of 50, it starts increasing. The more the age proceeds, the more the disease aggravates. It's a third common cancer in US and from the mortality side is the second most common cancer in US. Because the, the person gets a chance of having the cancer is six percent in his lifetime in US. As a routine, all persons above the age of 50, particularly who are supposed to have some factors influencing their uh, cause of the disease, like heredity or other things, but have to go routine investigations like colonoscopy or other things anyway. I don't know what happened in Malaysia, but it has been started in India in some good centers, like Tata Memorial Center or like that. The ethnic groups, particularly the Africans and the Hispanic groups, have the lowest survival rate. The, the disease is diagnosed at a later stage and they survive less. Now, in Malaysia, it is the fourth cause, leading cause of cancer. In male, it is the most, most common and it is the third most common cause in women. If we go through the entire list of cancer, what happens in the human body, in peninsular Malaysia, colorectal cancer is commonest in male, then comes lung cancer, mesopharyngeal cancer, prostate cancer and liver cancer. In female, the breast cancer comes ahead of colorectal cancer in Malaysia. Colorectal cancer comes second, lung, cervical and nasopharyngeal comes later. If you go through the next slide, the colorectal cancer is common in Malay in 8.4% of cases and it beats lung here. In case of Chinese men, colorectal cancer is 8.8% and lung cancer comes second at 6.1 percent. In Indian male, colorectal cancer and prostate cancer comes almost akin, side by side. In Malay females, breast cancer tops the list with 32.4 percent. In colorectal cancer comes a distant second of 8.8 percent. .8%. In Chinese female, Breast cancer is 31 percent and colorectal is 13.9. If we take the total population, we can well judge how many thousands of people are being affected with colorectal and breast cancer. In Indian female, breast cancer now tops the list. When I was a student, say 50 years back, then cervical cancer was the commonest cause. Particularly, the papilloma virus probably created all these problems. Now, we have started giving vaccination for papilloma virus. And that has brought down the list. Moreover, the easier diagnostic method for cervical cancer has reduced the risk. In the, it is often diagnosed in stage zero in C2 stage. I have told you already the age factor is very important for colorectal cancer. The, as the age progresses, the disease progresses, percent of disease increases. The diet is very, very important. If you have high fat and low fiber diet, the chance of developing cancer increases more. Probably the fibers gives some sort of beneficiary effect to the colonic mucous membrane 
by giving softest tool and not hardening it. It has not been proved, but statistically it is definitely proved that a high fiber diet reduces colony cancer. Now comes the hereditary history. Familiar polyposis is known to a lot of you people. Familiar polyposis means only in the colonic, colonic area which runs in family, some of it turns into malignant. And with time, if the polyps are not treated properly, a lot of them will become cancer. I have treated an unfortunate family of five brothers who had coronary cancers <coughs> at some time of their life. Peculiarly, the junior members of that family, junior brothers, they refused to undergo colonoscopy <coughs> until and until they developed cancer. This is a mindset you know. You cannot, you can advise people, but you can force them to do. You can give lectures, you can tell the patient, one should go for colonoscopy if you are bleeding, if you have some problem. Some are scared of it, some are shy of it. Now, ovarian cancer and colony cancer sometimes occurs to the uterine cancer also, uterine body. Why we don't know? There must be some genetic factor which has not yet been studied. You can give the slide of adenomatous colonic body. In 25% of the people, adenomatous colony polyp starts by the age of 50 and it increases with increasing age. Now, <coughs> chronic cancer is influenced by a few basic things like lack of physical exercise, obesity. Why obesity? increases chronic cancer, you don't know, but it may be related with some hormones, I don't know. Red meat is bad for colon. Too much of red meat, I don't mean once or twice a week, but the meat should be rather not on the higher side, not should be the principal part of your meal. <coughs> Probably in USA, where they take a good amount of steak and that contains a very high amount of red meat and the amount of the use we cannot think the Indian, I don't believe, the Malaysian also having 500 or 700 grams of steak. It will be difficult to consume for us, but they do really consume it, they do exercise and they develop colony cancer a lot. Smoking. Smoking causes cancer throughout the body. More for colon, pancreas, lungs. The only beast who smokes is man. I don't know, even with training, whether the apes will continue smoking. Well, you can ask to stop it. You cannot stop it. The human nature, whenever there is some negative factor should not be done, people is encouraged to break it. The young adults, adolescent period, when they start smoking, so the most harmful part of smoking is to them. A 60-year-old man, if he starts smoking, will not be harmed that much as a 16-year-old child or 13 to 18 or 20 smokes 20 cigarettes a day, will be harmed. Nicotine <coughs> is a vasoconstrictor. It increases the hypertension, reduces the capillary flow and increases 
the cancer everywhere in body, nasopharynx, lungs, pancreas, colon, everywhere. But we know some titles which can prevent colonic cancer like taking calcium, taking folic acid, routine milk and folic acid may reduce colonic cancer to great extent. Another thing is the postmenopausal women who takes HRT. The estrogen support in a small dose, its repression support minimizes colonic cancer. A seasonal fruit, a fruit a day, may keep cancer away. Now I come to my favorite part, the clinical presentation. Basically, I am a clinician. One has to examine the patient, hear his symptoms. A patient, in whoever comes to you with a bleeding per rectum, should have a thorough clinical examination, including a digital examination and a protoscopy and later on chronoscopy and sigmoidoscopy. These are the scopes which are introduced into the colon to see the structure of the colon, to see any ulcer is there. But the very basic thing which you can have checked yourself is <coughs> looking at your stool and sending it for looking for frank blood. Cancer colon is an open tumor. It bleeds. The bleed may not be evident to the naked eye but it is present in stool. If you have a routine rhythm in the stool, say every three or six months like that, and if blood comes, you should have some special test. That should be the first criteria which is most easily done and very easily avoided. Somehow, stool examination when advised, people do not think that it is important, but it is important to detect colon cancer at a very, very early stage. Now, a man or a whoever in person may be, may have some change in bowel habit, alternate constipation and diarrhea because the lumen is obstructed gradually. Stool tries to come out by force, by pest horses. He might have we might develop constipation and then a diarrhea when that obstruction passes off, he will have a good party. This ordinary constipation and diarrhea is an indication, clinical finding of coronary cancer. In some cases, they come as anemic. In some cases, general fatigue, weakness. In some cases, they represent with a lump. Lump meaning when you examine the abdomen, you get a fullness, or you can palpate the tumor even if it is big enough. And then comes the digital examination. By finger, putting a finger in the rectum, you can diagnose a rectal carcinoma or a low sigma D carcinoma which dips into the rectum like a polyp. Then comes the sigmoidoscopy and the colonoscopy. In some unfortunate cases, who have not been diagnosed early, they may come in signs of distant metastasis, like say a neck node or a liver metastasis or ascites, collection of fluid in the abdomen, gradual swelling of the abdomen with no cause exciting some fatigue and gradual swelling that may be a sign <coughs> of coronary culture. Now, when you are suspecting colonic carcinoma, you are advising some investigations like sigmoidoscopy, like colonoscopy, and take out a small tissue from that area. This is known as biopsy. This can give a confirmatory diagnosis of colonic carcinoma. In some cases, you can differentiate it. You can differentiate it 
from adenomar. Adenomar is a benign tumor of colon. Polyp is a benign tumor of colon which has not changed into carcinoma. If you find a polyp in colonoscope, take out the polyp, send it for biopsy. That will prevent cancer later on. The benign lesions of colon are numerous, particularly the IBT. Huh? Well, um, that is proved only by colonoscopy and should not be a part of uh, problem. Now, the colonic carcinoma, when it starts, it starts in the innermost lining of colon. That is the pavement epithelium of colon. Then it gradually proceeds upwards externally. Stage 0, when there is no tumor. Stage 1, when the innermost lining is affected. Then comes the muscular part. Then comes the fungating part. When stage 1 to stage 4, it gradually the growth comes from the inside of the colon outside. And when it comes outside, it may give rise to involvement of the local glands or through the bloodstream, it may spread as in other areas. Now, why it is important to diagnose it in the early stage? Because in stage 1 or stage 2 cases, almost 80 to 90 percent of the patient will live for more than 5 years if it is treated early. That is the reason why one should go for an early diagnosis of colonic cancer, particularly if you have the history that someone in the family has a colon cancer, he should advise the investigation to prevent or to diagnose colon cancer in an early stage. If you find a polyp, remove it. If you find a growth, remove it. Now, the recent investigations like CT scan, the MRI, these are necessary mostly to detect not the primary tumor only, but for the secondary factors, secondary areas where whether the glands are involved, whether the liver is involved, whether the lung is involved. After the diagnosis and a proven biopsy, then comes the treatment part. Basically, treatment of cancer is in three areas. One is surgery, the other is radiotherapy, and the third is chemotherapy. Now the chemotherapy part is diversified into a lot of branches like immunotherapy, molecular therapy, targeted therapy, but still the principal part remains is surgery. What do you mean by surgery? Remove the tumor with a very healthy margin and remove the region of glands as well. At least routine hemicolectomy means removal of half of the colon. That should include removal of at least 12 glands. Otherwise, you will feel that the operation is not fully performed. When you do a hemicolectomy, must remove the region of glands. This is a part and parcel of surgery and the oncology surgeon who do not remove the regional glands has not performed the surgery well. When it is, happens in the rectum, particularly say 6 cm or 7 cm away from rectum, one has to do it. remove the rectum as well. This is known as abdominoperineal dissection or APRs operation, making a terminal colostomy in the lateral side of the abdomen, left side or right side, usually the left side, the terminal prostomy, where a bag is put and fish has a stool in that. But by doing APR, you must remove the surrounding tissue, including the mesorectum, 
which contains plants. Sometimes we also remove the retroperitoneal lymph node, which is rather rare, but you do it. Sometimes we do it. Now, after the surgical excision, we wait for the biopsy report. Let's see the type of tumor. And then we advise further treatment. Further treatment includes chemotherapy and radiotherapy. A surgeon who does a surgery and does not do the other treatment is not giving full benefit to the patient because a local radiotherapy may minimize growth for many, many years. A carcinoma rectum should have a whole pelvic radiation later on because that will minimize the recurrence. When there is a growth in the sigmoid, we do the surgery which is known as anterior resection, meaning the removal of the sigmoid colon, attaching the colon, left side of the colon to the rectum so that the patient can run stool normally. But it should be specified that the growth was at least 7 cm away from the anus. Otherwise, the blood vessel, the lymphatic channels, which is present there, will again wreck up the tumor. In that case, it is better to remove the rectum. It is below 7 cm. One should remove the rectum as well. The radiation therapy, occasionally it is given to minimize the tumor primary prior to surgery or chemotherapy even prior to surgery, just which is known as neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Meaning, prior to surgery, you are minimizing the tumor which facilitates surgery and increases a good prognosis. Can you show me the slide of this intestinal cancer? This, I have got the, my personal slide for colon cancers, but this is a small intestinal cancer. The colon cancer looks just like it. This is a tumor of the small intestine. This is a GIST or gastrointestinal stomach tumor of the colon intestine. As I had this slide uh, picture with me, I have given it. The colon cancer looks just like this. A stage 4 colon cancer, which is come from the inside of the colon to outside. In this case, this is a small intestinal tumor. You should not be taken as a small colon cancer. The picture is like that. Same. Next. Let's go to that earlier slide. I think colon cancer, if treated correctly, should have a good survival rate of 5 to 10 years as a minimum rate. I have a few patients whom I have treated in 1980s and operated on them with a terminal colostomy. They are still okay. But it should be thought not as a surgical procedure but as a full team because the radiotherapist gave radiation, the chemotherapist gave chemotherapy, and all these three treatment has reduced this cancer and had given a good life. But after five years, you can think that the tumor is well controlled, not before that. A regular checkup, a regular follow up investigation, routine colonoscopy, occasional CT scan, that is necessary, including a few blood tests such as CEA, carcinoembryonic antigen. This is a blood test which can suggest increase of colonic cancer. Of course, other gastrointestinal cancer also in the CEA, but CEA is a very important part as a diagnostic tool, whether the cancer is increasing or not somewhere in the body, whether the patient should 